this is Cassandra and welcome to the Luminous Star Channel. Please like and or share this video and thank you for watching. Like the shadow that forms during an eclipse, my spirit and soul hovers near my flesh. I feel it when my soul leaves and returns to my precious temple. When she takes flight to the starry skies, that's when I die in bliss with the kiss of death on each breath I take, she and I, we make vibration. But for now, I engage in the Trinity. I live, I die and resurrect with each breath, with each blink of my eye. Yes, I die, I live and resurrect. That power within me, which is the powerful three, without the three, I would not, I could not be me. Just a few nights after my eighth birthday, my parents were getting ready to go out for the evening. Our neighbor, Karen, is looking out after me tonight. She's my favorite babysitter. She's the only one that allows me to stay up way past my bedtime and eat all the popcorn that I want. And she never tells my parents. That's our little secret. You be good and listen to Karen when she tells you to do something. Be in bed by nine, mom tells me with a kiss. And with a serious look and a slight grin, my dad looks at me and says, Robin, I want a good report from Karen when your mom and I return tonight. And oh yeah, keep that dog of yours on a tight leash. You know what happened last time you allowed him to run all over the house. He did his business in your mother's favorite pair of shoes and we were both punished for that one. I remember how mom had to soak her feet to get the mess out from in between her toes and dad thought it was still funny. But I could tell, to spare mom's feelings, he was holding back a good laugh. I put on a convincing sad face to add to the effect. At that point, my mom turns to Karen and says, okay, let's go over everything one more time while that corny husband of mine and this child laugh it up. We wouldn't want their sides to bust from laughter. My mother liked a good laugh too, but whenever the joke was on her, she got a little sarcastic, but we knew it was from love. Mom and dad had left and Karen and I decided to watch television. Karen asked with a smile, okay, Robin, will it be girlfriend? Anything, it doesn't matter, I replied with a slight frown, and my stomach replied with a growl in unison. Karen laughed. Ooh, it sounds like you're hungry. Go get yourself something out of the kitchen, but don't cook anything. I'll be there in a minute. I had gone to the kitchen with visions of bologna sandwiches dancing in my head. I came back with my sandwich, and I sat beside Karen. See, I didn't even fry the bologna. Yeah, yeah, she gives me a nudge. She says, you and your bologna sandwiches. Then she returns her attention back to the television. Top story tonight is about an escaped prisoner, David Bland, who is considered armed and very dangerous. He should not be approached if spotted. Here at the Blue Ridge Mall, David is seen here with a blue cap, white t-shirt, and blue jeans. He's 6'2", light brown hair, brown eyes, white male, age 33, with a muscular build. Good Lord, he's sure enough ugly. Probably had lots of holes in his grill too. He couldn't even eat this bologna sandwich if he tried. I tried to hold back gagging at the sight of Bland. Shh, Robin. If you should see this prisoner, call 555-4987. That's 555-4987. We have weather next. Stay tuned. Karen looked troubled by the news we just heard. I hope that clown stays away from this house tonight. The evening had gone by and Karen and I were really enjoying ourselves. We played a couple of board games, listened to some music, ordered pizza, and took my dog Chauncey out for a short walk around the neighborhood before it got dark. We were out walking Chauncey. Karen and I overheard some people talking about the Bland character on the loose. Karen called my parents on my dad's cell phone to tell them the news and to be careful. They told us to be careful as well. Stay alert and be inside before dark. Surprisingly, I was in bed by nine just like my parents wanted. Karen decided to keep the news on just in case there was more news about David Bland. It had not been five minutes that I was in bed that I can hear Chauncey, my dog, barking. He had been barking for a while now. It couldn't be because he's hungry. I made sure he had fresh food and water when we returned from his walk. I looked outside my window and I could see Chauncey looking towards the wooded area in the backyard of our house. He was pacing back and forth, barking and growling. Chauncey looks up at me, then looks back at the wooded area behind our house while he continued to bark. Well, he's tied up, can't hurt anyone, and won't be seeing his little dog girlfriend tonight. I had to laugh because 
Chauncey was a little wild, he had a little dark side too, but somehow he was different tonight. Somehow the whole neighborhood seemed different. Good night, Robin. You sleep tight and all that good stuff. Hey, you hear Chauncey out there? Yeah, but I know how crazy your dog is too. How long has it been since he spent time with his little favorite girl dog? Maybe he's lonely for her tonight. You fed him when you got back, right? Yeah, he should be okay. But can you please go outside and check on him, please? From my window, I can see that Karen turned the back porch light on. I can hear the back door open. She was checking on him. Chauncey seemed to calm down a little bit, but I was still wondering. He's okay. I'll even leave the back porch light on for a while. So I hear Karen shut the door, lock the door, and then I heard her come upstairs to tuck me in. Yeah, he's okay. You know, I'm really worried that that David Bland character is going to come around tonight. No, nah, I doubt it. The police are looking for him. I don't think he'll risk coming around here. Try not to worry about it, Robin. Everything's going to be okay. The whole time, I can hear Chauncey barking, and I can tell that Karen was just trying to keep me calm. She turns the light out, closes the door, and she goes back downstairs. Later on, I awaken with the sound of screaming coming from downstairs. I heard stomping about and things being thrown around like a hurricane was ripping the house apart. I was afraid to move. Didn't know if I would be safe staying in the bed, so I grabbed my dog and I tiptoed, opened the door, and I could still hear screaming. I can hear furniture being thrown about. Get away from me! I could tell that Karen was fighting with someone. All the commotion got louder and louder. Karen screamed, Robin! Cheers ran down my spine. It was so surreal how I could feel myself running downstairs. It felt like somebody had taken over my body. I made my way downstairs to the living room and there they all were. Karen and the escape prisoner, David Bland. He didn't see me standing there, so I ran for the kitchen. I tried to make it to the phone. The phone was dead, and so was Karen. My stomach dropped to my knees at the horror of feeling like I couldn't save my friend Karen. I was too late. Bland started looking for me at that point. I hid under the kitchen table, feeling safe for a while. The thick, foggy darkness embraced me like a warm blanket, beckoning me to stay quiet. As soon as he was out of sight, heading upstairs, I slowly got up from under the table. I made my way to the kitchen door that would lead me out to the front door of the house, but I think he heard me because he started running back downstairs. But I made it for the front door anyway. I just remember that I had my dog with me. I heard Bland coming back downstairs. I tripped over the small stool by the coat closet. As I struggled to get up on my feet, I felt Bland grab my ankles. My dog, where's my dog? I kicked him in the face as I struggled to make it to the door. Damn, I thought. The front door seemed as if it was leaving me, leaving me behind, getting further and further. That front door was my salvation. I cut my hand on the cracked mirror on the floor as I got up. I tried to make it for the door. I struggled. I fought. I could hear the blanding man grunting, cursing under his tongue. The cut on my hand, along with the cracked mirror, was a painful reminder of what happened to Karen earlier. Before the blanding man could regain his composure, I managed to get to my feet with my doll in hand. I opened up the front door and there was the freezing night that hit my skin like a dash of cold, icy water. I could not hear Chauncey barking in the back. He was barking like crazy earlier. I don't know what happened. I hate to think what happened to him. It was at this point that I wondered, did this bastard kill my dog? I ran across the street to the Wilson's house. No one answered. I turned to another house and another. There was no one home. Where was everyone? Why did everybody seem to go out tonight? Where were my parents? There was Bland coming towards me with a weapon. 
I ran down the dark street. They never did fix the street lights around here. Didn't anyone know that the Blaney man was out tonight? As I ran, the darkness seemed to leap out at me with big scary hands. My anger turned to fear as my heart was thumping so hard that it was the only sound that I could hear. I was then snatched out of that coma with the sound of a weapon being fired. I turned and Bland was firing at me. He fired another shot and then another, but he kept missing. Yeah, so much for his luck, but thank goodness I was lucky. As I kept running, I heard another shot and I noticed my doll's head rolled off. No such luck. My doll was off to dolly heaven. I dropped my doll and ran towards this dark park. The murderer followed me into that big mass of horror called darkness. I felt that we both were drowning in this darkness. I was more than convinced that Chauncey, my dog, had been taken by the Blandy man. Chauncey was fierce. He would have torn Blandy apart. Chauncey was wild and bold, and I know he put up a real fight, but that's why Blandy man got rid of him. It was at this point that I started thinking about my parents and how much I missed them. And why did they pick tonight to have a good time? They're my parents. They're not supposed to have a good time for goodness sakes. I thought about how much I would miss Chauncey and how much I would miss Karen. I hid behind the bushes, hoping that the Blandy man wouldn't find me. He was awfully close by me. My heart was so loud, so loud it seemed to be calling out to the murderer. My beating heart was betraying me at this point, yelling out to the Blandy man, hey, here she is, come and get her. The big trees seemed as if they were whispering to each other about me and watching what would happen next. They also seemed to be hovering over me. I guess they felt sorry for me that this murderer was after me. The bushes that I was hiding behind seemed to be betraying me too, waving him over to where I was. No wonder he stopped right in front of the bushes where I was hiding. Did I hear laughter? Yes, laughter from the darkness, from the trees and the bushes where I was so desperately hiding behind. I wondered in that moment if my headless doll that went off to Dolly Heaven was laughing at me too from beyond the plastic grave. Well, I guess I was having a carry moment because I felt that they were all laughing at me. Some part of me had to run, so I let my imagination run wild and free. My heart was beating so hard and fast, I barely noticed the sky. The stars were dancing. The wind was singing a song in which I could not understand because of its strange but beautiful language. I heard demons calling out to me, and they seemed to be teasing me and mocking my fear. The demons were laughing and saying that Satan was waiting for me to come into his kingdom. I was expected to arrive this very night. They let me know that there was no hope for me and that God would not be saving me. Then I thought about all the times that I stayed up past my bedtime. I stayed up late eating popcorn, laughing with Karen, having fun. Is this what it all come to? Is this why I won't see my parents again? Is this why I lost my dog? I was so desperate for comfort. I would have even welcomed the plastic hand of my doll at this point. They let me know that there was no hope and I started to believe it. There was no doubt that Blandy Man was gonna get me tonight. I'm never gonna see my parents again. The thought of that just was too much. The odds are against me. Where are my parents? Home sweet home seemed to be calling out to me. I wanted so badly to run to it with open arms. All the goodness seemed to run away from me and all the evil seemed to surround me. All strange and unknown forces seemed to invite me into their dark world tonight. Looked like Blandy Man's luck was returning I can hear his footsteps coming closer and closer. Robin, I know you're here. Come out. 
You're not going to get away. And after I get my hands on you, I'm going to make sure your mother pays for what she did. She's not going to get away with it. His footsteps got closer and closer. I almost wanted to shout out, why do you want to hurt us? But the darkness beckoned me to be quiet, to stay quiet, to stay still. His footsteps was getting closer and closer. And I remember wondering, how does he know my mother? Why does he want to hurt us? I knew your mother before you came. She owes me. She owes me big. And unfortunately for you, you're going to be ransomed. She took from me, and now I'm going to take from her. Your mom thought she could just run off with another man. I was the best thing that ever happened to her. And then you came. She's not going to get away with it. You're not going to get away with it. And your father's not going to get away with it. I guess it was a good thing that Tara had become my friend at that moment. Wherever my wild imagination had run off to, I was so tempted to get up and run and join it. The Blandy man would have been right on my heels, though. To top it all off, a chill ran down my spine. It gripped me. I couldn't speak. I was so tempted to tell the Blandy man that my father would whoop his ass. But I was silent. I began to sweat, and I watched his boots turn towards me. I heard his weapon click, ready to shoot again. If the bush betrayed me by showing the Blandy man, that's where I was hiding. I looked up, and I saw as he began to move the bush back. It was at that moment, off in the distance, I can hear the voice of my mother and my father calling out for me. I am now in my mother's womb, awaiting birth in a New York hospital. I'm very much alive, and I know everything that's going to take place in my life until the age of eight. Once my mother gives birth, she will call me Robin. Strange as it may seem that I've been aware of my future prior to my mother's delivering me into the world, I'm not very afraid, but I am a little curious to know as how my mom came to know this Blandy man. How did he feel that he had rights to me, my father, and my mother's life? It all just seems strange. I wonder if I'm going to live past the age of eight. But I know up until that point, I have two parents who love me, so that's good. However, I wonder if the Blandy man continued to terrorize me, my mother, and my father. His narcissistic ways, his strange ways the way he was obsessed with my mom. He just couldn't get past her going on with her life as she had every right to do. The Blandy man didn't seem like a good man anyway. So good riddance, my mom found real love with my father. But he just couldn't seem to let it go. Maybe I'll live to be a hundred. Only God knows. Well, the only thing that I know is that I had a good life until the age of eight. Any minute now, my mom will be giving birth to me. I feel myself beginning to drift ever so slowly. The details of my life will begin like that of a movie. I just hope that... Like the shadow that forms during an eclipse, my spirit and soul hovers near my flesh. I feel it when my soul leaves and returns to my precious temple. When she takes flight to the starry skies, that's when I die in bliss with the kiss of death on each breath that I take, she and I, we make vibration. But for now, I engage in the Trinity. I live, die, and resurrect with each breath, with each blink of my eye. Yes, I die, live, and resurrect the power within me, which is the powerful three. Without the three, I would not, could not, be me. Death to the two, power to the three. I celebrate the one, the real one. I am, yes, that's me.